Hello and welcome to the Psychology in Seattle podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kirk Honda, and today's short video is on Bowenian therapy. I've had a long history with Bowen and his famous theory. On my first day as a professor in 1997, I was extremely nervous as I gave my very first lecture, and this first lecture was on Bowenian theory. Since then, Bowenian theory has continued to be a part of my teaching of students, my supervision of therapists, my work with clients, and in my personal life. In the mid-20th century, century, Murray Bowen was among the pioneers of family therapy, and nearly every family therapist has continued to study his theory in graduate school today. Here are the main concepts as I see them. Number one, anxiety. He used the word anxiety as a general term for emotional tension or stress. Bowen believed that anxiety moves through the system from one person to the next. He believed it impairs our ability to think and reason. He also believed that many presenting problems are a result of anxiety or stress. Number two, togetherness versus separateness. Bowen believed that all life possesses these two opposing forces, that togetherness force compels us to be with others, to seek approval, and to attach to others. And the separateness force compels us to be independent, to have our own beliefs, and to not be smothered by others. Bowen asserted that we strive for balance between these two forces, and if they are balanced well, we can be close to our loved ones without losing our sense of individuality. Number three, the feeling guidance system versus the intellectual guidance system. Bowen believed that we have two inner guidance systems, the feeling or emotional guidance system and the intellectual or reasoning guidance system. The feeling guidance system involves emotion, automatic reactions, knee-jerk reactions, instincts, urges, etc. And the intellectual guidance system involves thinking, judgment, logic, rational thought, reasoning, etc. Bowen asserted in order to make functional decisions, we need access to both guidance systems, and we need to be able to differentiate between them. Number four, differentiation. This is his most famous concept. If someone is differentiated, they can do two things well. They can differentiate between their emotional guidance system and their reasoning guidance system. This allows them to choose to be guided by either system, and they can differentiate themselves from other people. They don't get wrapped up in other people's emotions, and they can be intimate with others while also remaining separate and individuated. In general, people at higher levels of differentiation have less emotional reactivity, have the ability to calm their emotions, can make more thoughtful and intentional decisions, don't give in to pressure from others, are less vulnerable to stress, are independent, are less prone to triangulation, have the ability to extricate themselves from emotional entanglements, have fewer physical problems, emotional problems, and social problems, can have closeness with others without getting lost in the relationship, and have more fulfilling relationships in general. People at lower levels of differentiation are more emotionally reactive, have difficulty engaging in thoughtful behavior, have difficulty saying no to people, are more critical and judgmental, are overly concerned about approval, are more dependent on others, are more prone to triangulation, enmeshment, disengagement, conflict, and cutoff, have difficulty making decisions have greater physical problems, emotional problems, and social problems, have difficulty communicating directly, and repeat problematic relationships rather than learning from their mistakes. Bowen rated people on a differentiation scale from 1 to 100, with 100 being completely differentiated and 1 being completely fused. In a family, the person with the lowest number is often the symptom bearer of the family fusion. Bowen believed that most people stay at the differentiation level they had when they left home, which is very rarely above 60. Also, we tend to choose spouses and friends with similar differentiation levels. So he believed that your differentiation level is relatively fixed for life. However, your differentiation level will diverge from your baseline depending on your current stress level and the coping skills that you employ. Bowen believed that you can slowly raise your baseline differentiation level by managing your emotional reactivity and by detriangulating yourself from your family of origin, particularly your parents. Number five, triangulation. Aside from differentiation, this is his other famous concept. Bowen believed that when two people experience relational tension, they tend to pull in a third party to dissipate that tension. Here are some examples of triangles. A conflictual married couple focuses on a child to avoid their marital conflict. Two people meet for the first time, and to alleviate their nervousness, they talk about the weather or about sports. A wife complains to her therapist about her husband. During a marital conflict, a child misbehaves to distract the parents from their fighting. A married couple has lost faith in their ability to communicate, so they watch a lot of TV. In this example, the TV is a triangulated third party. As an example from Star Wars, Anakin Skywalker complains to Emperor Palpatine about the Jedi Council. 
Another example from Star Wars, when Princess Leia argues with Han Solo, she kisses Luke Skywalker. These are all examples of triangles. Bowen believed that particular triangles become fixed over time in families and act predictably to alleviate stress and anxiety. I like to delineate between what I might call dysfunctional triangles and functional triangles. A dysfunctional triangle is one that perpetuates the problem, and a functional triangle helps resolve the problem. Bowen believed that the triangle between you and your parents is the most important triangle in your life, and that this triangle determines the interactional patterns for your future relationships. You can detriangulate from a dysfunctional triangle by being as differentiated as possible when engaged with the triangle, by being as calm and cool as possible, by not taking sides, by not becoming emotionally reactive, or you can make it a functional triangle by helping the dyad to resolve their problem. So what do Bowenian therapists do? In a nutshell, Bowenian therapists try to help their clients act in a more differentiated manner, which is thought to result in better relationships, reduce symptoms, and greater well-being. To this end, they help people to be thoughtful in the face of stress rather than reacting without thinking. They might teach emotional awareness skills and emotional management skills. They might coach the client to differentiate from their family of origin. Bowenian therapists like to make genograms with their clients. They also assess the family pattern, the family history, the family structure, each person's differentiation level, the way the family handles anxiety and stress, the way anxiety moves through the family, and the way they triangulate. Bowenian therapists like to help people individuate, to become more independent, and to be more self-soothing. Bowenian therapists teach their clients about how family systems work, so clients have a better understanding of how their own family operates. Bowenian therapists try to help people communicate their needs in a more differentiated manner. They try to help people to shift from trying to change others to trying to change themselves. They encourage clients to assume responsibility for their own life. Bowenian sessions tend to be controlled and cerebral rather than emotional and passionate. Bowenian therapists tend to work with just the parents or even just the most differentiated parent, even if the presenting problem involves the child. Bowenian therapists are diligent about not getting pulled into dysfunctional triangles with the clients. Also, Bowen believed that in order for a therapist to be effective, they had to differentiate from their family of origin, in the same way he differentiated from his own family of origin, which is described in his famous paper published in 1972. In this paper, he describes how he differentiated from his family of origin by remaining calm and non-defensive with them, and he detriangulated from his parents, who often confided in him about the other parent. He also established emotional connectedness by having one-on-one -on -one contact with each family member. He gained insight in how the family system operated and found that this process increases overall differentiation level and he was able to be less reactive with everyone in his life. He also found that he was a better therapist as a result, so he encouraged his trainees to follow the same procedure and differentiate from their own families of origin. So what are the critiques of Bowenian theory? Feminists criticize the way Bowenian theory privileges masculine Northern European culture by promoting independence and devaluing emotion. Postmodernists criticize Boenian theory since the theory does not recognize the way the therapist is a part of the system. Systemic purists criticize Boenian theory since it posits that dysfunction and fusion travels in one direction, from parents to children, rather than acknowledging that dysfunctions are often circular in nature, with children participating in the family dynamic. Collaborative therapists criticize Boenian therapy for imposing goals upon the client, such as detriangulation, rather than working collaboratively with the client. Other kinds of family therapists criticize Boenian therapy for not including the entire family in treatment. Proponents of cultural competency might criticize Boenian therapy for not sufficiently emphasizing cultural awareness and sensitivity. Trauma therapists might criticize Boenian therapy for not incorporating our contemporary understanding of trauma recovery. Others criticize the theory for providing a reductive and simplistic explanation for too many presenting problems. In light of current neuroscience, some might argue that it is inaccurate to dichotomize thinking and feeling. Having said all that, all of my favorite approaches have at least some problems with them, and as long as these critiques are considered carefully by Bowenian therapists, I believe this form of therapy can be very helpful with many presenting problems, but probably not all. What do I like about this approach? I find the concepts of differentiation and triangulation to be extremely useful. I like the way the theory conceptualizes pathology as a relational issue. I like the way it provides a way of tracking emotions as they move through families. I think the idea of establishing a differentiated one-on-one -on -one relationship with each member of your family of origin is a very useful idea. The assessment of triangles is also very useful when treating families. I like how this approach gives permission to family therapists to work with individuals if they determine that it would be the most effective way to work with them.
And finally, I like this theory because it provided the foundation for the much-loved Family of Origin course in my Marriage and Family Therapy program at Antioch University, Seattle. That's the end of this short video. If you want more information, go to psychologyinseattle.com where you can contact us and take our online continuing education courses. Thanks for joining me, and please take care.